Okay, so I had mentioned that I had done an ink sketch, which I have now downloaded. Because one way you can refine your sketch from your pencil is to ink it. And I, I inked it physically with a Sharpie. Now here's the problem with inking something on paper. And you can use better paper and better pens. But I just wanted to show you some basic use, right? So I used a permanent black pen. And you can see how it bleeds into the paper. And when you scan something, you can't scan something as a vector. You can only scan it as a raster file. So you see all of the different pixels that make that up. And you can see you always want to scan at full color because you get uh, four lenses on the scanner that way rather than just one lens when you scan in grayscale. And I have a good looking image here, but it's not anywhere as clean as the vector line work I need. So my first step, if I, if I inked it by hand, is to open it with a raster program to clean it up. So I'm going to open it up with Photoshop. Let me close my major mock-up here. Save some space. And then what we're going to do is clean it up so that we can bring it into Illustrator and do what's called live tracing it. And for those of you drawing Nico in the class, you might not notice, but Nico's plumage, kind of the reflection in the plumage, it makes an N. So in this case, it's a lowercase n. If it's reversed, at least in my main designs of Nico, I haven't tested it in this design. But when it's reversed, it makes a capital N. So I, you see how that kind of works, which is a nice little detail. So these are the things when you're trying to stay on model so the character looks like the character, these are, are little tricks that can help, right? He also has a simplified version of the Alamo College's logo on his, on his um, tank top. And like Donald Duck, he has no pants. All right. So how do I clean this up? First, I can go to Levels under Direct Adjustments. And I can brighten that highlight level so you no longer see the texture of the paper, right? So go to the edge of the histogram there. And then I can darken the shadows so you no longer see the texture of the paper within the inks. So now you have almost what's called a bitmap image, which would only be white pixels and black pixels. And we don't only want black and white because we want a little bit of softening of gray at the edges. And then I can use the midtone slider to decide how thick or thin those edges should be. I actually want to thicken them a little bit because that helps to smooth them out. And it looks more like a coloring book that way. But you see how bumpy it is. It's crazy bumpy. Now I could go in with my eraser or with a white brush. And I could spend a lot of time trying to clean this up. But I'm going to show you a better way. You know, using white at 100%. I could clean up all those bumps but that would take a long time you might as well just re-ink it but this shows you some of the challenges when you when you scan something that is that is turned in this way okay now i'm going to do levels again and this time i'm going to thin out the lines by brightening the midtones and brightening the highlights. So it kind of bites away at it. You see how that starts to really smooth it out. From this to this. And it opens up some of those areas. Sometimes when you play with levels like close gaps that you want will just turn to black. But it's still mighty bumpy in most places. 
And that's why if you're going to ink by hand, the cleaner the inks, the better. The better the paper, the better the brush, all of that. The next tip is to isolate just the black line. So I'm going to select the white space and I'm going to check, I'm going to uncheck contiguous. So it's just all the whites. And then I'm going to say select inverse and then I'm going to do command J to duplicate. So it just puts the black lines on the image. Then this is our, what we did for our logos. I'm going to use layer styles and I'm going to give it inner glow. This will soften the edges slightly. I'm going to set the inner glow to be 100% opacity. I'm going to set the noise to be zero. And I'm going to set the size to be quite small. I'll zoom in and show you what this does. So what it does is it will soften the edges. I'm going to take down the jitter. And I'm going to decrease the range, right? So what this does is this bites away at the edges of my black. Doesn't make it perfectly smooth, but it makes it a whole lot smoother than I had before. And it will look a little thin where it's thin, and that actually isn't a bad thing. So now what I can do is put just a blank white layer behind it, edit fill with white. Now I'm showing you all of this, even if you're not going to scan something that you ink by hand, just because this comes in really handy for cleaning up line art. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say rasterize the layer style, just like you can rasterize vectors that you bring into raster programs, you can rasterize those layer effects. By rasterizing it, now it turns those all into pixels that are locked in. And then I can go back to adjustments and levels, and I can darken those midtones so that it becomes a solid black as thick as I want. So much smoother than when it started. All right, so I went from this to this. Now this is a much better candidate for doing what's called live tracing, or in vernacular, what's called vectorizing, changing something into a vector, taking a raster image and changing it into a vector. And whether you actually do this or not as part of this project, it's something I want you to know for the final exam. What makes a good candidate for vectorization for live tracing and what doesn't. So we know from our last project that live tracing or that vectors are like cutouts of black paper, right? So anything that you can see as being able to be simplified into a cutout of black paper is a good candidate for, for live tracing. So I tried to clean it up so that it works a little bit better this way, even though I'm going to show you multiple ways to get vector line art. So how do I save it? Well, I can save it as a JPEG, just a simple black and white image JPEG. The edges are slightly softened. That's going to help its live trace too. It's not bitmapped, it's not only black and white. It doesn't matter if it's in color, if it's in grayscale, but I, I tend to use color because you get a, a bigger range of pixels that way. Come on, save it here. But this is not my sketch. This is something I've cleaned up in order to be able to trace it. And so I call these test files. They're like transitional files. So I'm going to label it, I'm going to put it to the desktop, computer's going slower than I want it to, come on, I 
I'm going to move my scan sketch into my folder. What is going on? Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm scanning it to the desktop and I'm going to call it. <laughs> my test to vectorize file. And I don't want it as a TIFF, I want it as just a regular JPEG. So I'll say save as a copy to the desktop as a JPEG. All right, now I go to Illustrator. I open up Adobe Illustrator. While that's opening, I can take my sketch in Photoshop, and I can do what's called onion skinning it, just like we did for our logos. I'm going to make double click it so it's unlocked, layer zero. I'm going to take its opacity down to 50%. That's just because you can't reduce the opacity on a background layer. But I'm going to move the white behind it. And so you see now I have kind of a thin, thin outline of it. And I might do that to this as well. And maybe that's what I will onion skin. I'll actually take that down because it's such so solid black to about 30%. Okay. And I'm going to save this as my sketch to ink. So I'll save that as my sketch to ink assignment five as a PSD. I'm going to also save that to downloads, move it into my folder, and we'll come back to that. Okay, now I open up Illustrator. It's still opening. And in the meantime, I'm going to go to this program Photo P. So instead of that I saved the sketch to ink, in Photo P, the browser-based program that you guys can use from home to work on your refined sketches. And this will be for digitally inking within a raster program. And remember that Photo P can open PSD files and can support those multiple layers, this working format. So it can work back and forth between Photoshop. But what I like about Photo P for digital inking as a raster program is that it takes a feature from Illustrator that Photoshop doesn't have, which is to turn on smoothing as you ink. So in Photo P, I can use the brush tool, set it to black, just use a basic brush. I'm going to soften it just slightly to 90, but not very much, and make it about 20 pixels. And then I can use my tablet and I can ink, right? But I'm going to do this on a layer on top. I'll call this my ink layer. And what's great is I have this smooth scale here. And the smooth scale is a lot like the one in, in Illustrator, where it will help me not be so jittery as I'm inking. So that's with a smooth of 71. With a smooth of zero, am I doing the same thing? I'll just do it above. Can look a lot less smooth, right? Now the problem with it being browser-based is that it can have a little bit of lag to it, which is really a problem. And then you can also set your brush to be pressure sensitive, which is something else that is harder to support in uh, Illustrator. So let me make it a bigger size. And just depending on what your Illustrator